Hundreds of uninvited teenagers trashed a family's home for a social media prank. A doctor is accused of non-consensual testicle ultrasounds in his bedroom. And a man stole 200,000 Cadbury cream eggs. These are the weird stories for Tuesday on Weird AF News. The only daily weird news podcast recorded by a comedian inside a closet in Los Angeles and other things. A man is facing prison over the theft of 200,000 Cadbury cream eggs. A chocolate thief is facing major jail time after he admitted that he stole almost 200,000 Cadbury cream eggs in a Cadbury cream egg heist. Ooh, this guy's name's Joby Poole, age 32. He's been dubbed the Easter Bunny by the police, so oh, because they have a sense of humor. He used a stolen lorry cab to make off with chocolate after breaking into a Telford industrial unit with a metal grinder over the weekend. This guy was very serious about this chocolate heist. One man operation. It says here Mr. Poole, a self employed ground worker, used a tractor which had been stolen in the Yorkshire area to tow away the trailer full of chocolate eggs, which was then driven eventually reaching the northbound M42. He was spotted by police and gave up at Junction 11 and walked towards the police with his hands up. He was arrested, and the load was recovered. I mean, it's a big, valuable load of eggs. It's a good thing they stopped it. Eggs are really going up in price these days. Regular eggs, and I assume Cadbury eggs as well. I mean, I don't know if you've heard about that. Um, that bird flu affected the... Cadbury egg output as well because they come from a chocolate bird. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know that. But I'm just trying to educate you on where a lot of our Easter treats come from. Cadbury has uh, these chocolate chicken factories all over the world, so they make the, they make these they spit out these Cadbury eggs. But they've been um, the chocolate chicken population has suffered because of the bird the bird flu. <laughs> Stupid. All right, in all seriousness, I, can I just say how much I love Cadbury cream eggs? They're very good. I don't know what that cream is in the middle, but it is delightful. It was like my favorite Easter treat as a child. A little sugary, though. Um, I've moved on to the Cadbury mini eggs now as an adult. I, I find them to be better these days. They're not, not as crazy as the Cadbury eggs, uh, the, the cream eggs, I should say. The, the mini eggs are amazing. And it's uh, you'd be happy to hear that there was no interference with the Cadbury egg food products that were stolen. Uh, they will be in a condition that can actually go back on the shelves, they say. Well, I didn't know they did that. Uh, you recover your product from a heist and you're allowed to put it back on the food shelf. Uh, now, in a series of tweets, the local police described the incident as an extravagant theft of a chocolate box collection because they are... Very punny over there at the West Mercia Police Department. Uh, this guy's going to be sentenced in Shrewsbury. Who's ever heard of a Shrewsbury? I guess it's a place. Yay! Hundreds of uninvited teenagers trash a family's home during a mansion rager. Hundreds of teenagers broke into a Texas family's home for what's called a mansion rager. A mansion rager is a party promoted on social media without the homeowner's knowledge. So it's trespassing and vandalism rager, sounds like, more so than mansion rager. It's going to jail rager. How about that? <laughs> wow, social media, man. The crazy things people are doing. They're gathering and doing weird things. Here's a quote from the homeowner in Austin, Texas, who I assume was very surprised that there was uninvited teenagers in the family's home doing a mansion rager. Probably ruined his whole kitchen. Can you imagine? He just put that kitchen in. Nice countertop, and then they had a mansion rager. Ugh. Here's a quote from the guy. We started receiving numerous phone calls from our neighbors that there were kids on our water tower on our property. There were cars up and down the street. The kids were hopping over the front of our fence. The kids were everywhere on our lawn. They were in the rooms. My neighbors called me and said, there's kids everywhere. And I don't, I don't they, they, you know, they know I don't have that many kids. The shindig caused thousands of dollars in damages, by the way, this shindig. The unidentified homeowner said he rushed home and found car after car after car just trying to flee the scene. 
Apparently, this party was reportedly promoted on the social media app Snapchat, where it was described as a mansion rager. Mansion rager. So search for hashtag mansion rager, guys, and make sure your home isn't on there if you happen to be on vacation or something. Keep an eye on that mansion rager hashtag on all social medias so that you, you can rest at peace knowing that hundreds of teenagers aren't in your hot tub. The homeowner said this wasn't a case of local students knowing a classmate's parents weren't home for the weekend. The family only has a toddler who isn't even in school yet. It was horrifying, man. I mean, it was just unbelievable, this total violation of one's privacy. Oh, this poor homeowner feels very violated. Who wouldn't? When the homeowner pulled up to his house, he found the front gate was broken. All the lights were on. The front door was wide open. Other areas in the home were damaged by apparent drunken teenagers. They were drunken as well. Oh. They were probably playing those party games like Flip Cup. Here's another quote from the owner. They had beer cans, seltzer cans, like that White Claw. I saw they had thrown avocados at the wall. There was damage to the sheetrock and the baseboards. They had thrown tools through the sheetrock of our garage. They had my daughter's toys all scattered around the property as well. What are they doing, these kids? Getting drunk and playing with kids' toys? Sheesh. The homeowner also reported that some of these partiers left articles of clothing behind, showing that they attended schools from all over the area. Oh, that's not too bright. If you're going to do a mansion rager, don't leave behind any evidence boys and girls, or whatever you identify as. Here's another quote from our angry Austin homeowner. We have some articles of other kids that were out on the property, and it was from all the major high schools in the greater Austin area. It was Westlake High, Vandegrift, Lake Travis, and Bowie. Those are for certain. Now, there seems to be little consequences for these actions, and I feel like it'll keep getting worse if we don't get to the bottom of things like this, such as this. Man, we're talking avocados against the wall, man. This is degenerate behavior. Now, according to history, a similar incident unfolded in Florida last year after teenagers broke into an $8 million home in Santa Rosa for a wild party. In addition to breaking in, the suspects were accused of stealing a $1,500 bottle of wine, a $3,500 purse, and a football signed by former, former Colts quarterback Peyton Manning. They stole a Peyton Manning autographed football. What the hey? Oh, these pesky teenagers. Whoo, and their social media mansion ragers. Watch out for this stuff. Particularly concerning if you happen to own a mansion. Um, I don't own a mansion. And I highly doubt that hundreds of uninvited teenagers can, fl can play Flip Cup in my closet. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A doctor is accused of conducting testicular ultrasounds on patients non-consensually in his home. This sounds like the strangest form of foreplay I've ever heard of. Would you like to come over my place for a glass of wine and a an non-consensual testicular ultrasound? <laughs> uh, this maniac lives in Cincinnati. He is a University of Cincinnati Medical Center doctor. He, uh... He has had his license suspended, as you can imagine, because he's doing illegal medical practices in his kitchen. Uh, this is after he allegedly conducted and filmed multiple ultrasound examinations on patients, including a non-consensual examination of their testicles in the bedroom of his apartment. I don't know how you convince somebody to allow you to do your medical examination in the bedroom of their apartment. It's, um I want to guess he drugged these people as well. I mean, how did your doctor get you from the medical center to, to his or her apartment? Something fishy here. Let's keep reading. Let's keep learning. According to the State Medical Board of Ohio, Dr. Rudel Anton Saunders's continued practice presents what they say is, quote, a danger of immediate and serious harm to the public. Yeah, that's an understatement. 
The board is accusing Saunders of lying to his patients, telling them that he was required to complete a certain number of ultrasound exams for a particular training program. He then allegedly conducted these exams on five patients in the bedroom of his apartment. The board said that Dr. Saunders conducted these examinations without informing the patients or without obtaining proper consent. None of the genitalia exams were performed for legitimate health care reasons. And on multiple occasions, Dr. Saunders is accused of filming the examinations without the knowledge of the patients. Well, that's just a big shady smoothie right there, isn't it, Dr. Saunders? He probably shared the photos and video online. Imagine finding a video of your non-consensual genitalia ultrasound exam on TikTok or something. That's a bad day. The medical board said that Dr. Saunders also failed to wear gloves. <laughs> wear gloves? Why would he wear gloves? He's getting people into his bedroom. He's, <laughs> he's doing this stuff in his bathroom in his kitchen. You think he's going to wear gloves at this point, man? I'm sure he broke all the protocol. Uh, says he didn't wear gloves while performing the ultrasounds on his patient's testicles on multiple occasions. In a notice of suspension sent to Dr. Saunders, the board notified him that his alleged conduct constitutes misdemeanor and felony charges. He faces a fine of up to $20,000. The board is investigating the allegations and will decide the future of Saunders' ability to practice medicine in Ohio. Yeah, I mean, don't take up too much, too much of your time deciding. This is a cut-and-dry case, it seems. You have video evidence. Eh! You have enough video evidence to know that he didn't wear gloves, so I think you got him, guys. You got him by the throat here. The University of Cincinnati removed any links with information about Saunders from their website as well. That's good. That's good. You want to remove him from your affiliation. Yeah, because this guy's clearly nuts. He thinks he's straight balling, but he's nuts. All right, enough puns. Yay! A mixture of sports, culture, and entertainment. The Trey Wallace Show will have it all. There are no filters, and the gloves are coming off as we break down the latest news. Joined by friends and colleagues, I'll give you my perspective on the sports world and more. From college football to the College World Series, there isn't a topic I won't discuss. Tune in to Trey Wallace Podcast. Hey, thanks for spending time with the Weird AF News Podcast. Appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider. Uh, if you want more of this, it's five days a week, just letting you know. I will annoy you five days a week. <laughs> so just full disclosure here, guys. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, check out my website, weirdafnews.com, the official website of Weird AF News. Over there, you can uh, submit an article. Uh, you can also join the Patreon or buy Jonesy a coffee right on there. You can click on those things. Just, just other ways to support if you feel like it. Uh, not necessary, though. If you want to call the show, the number six four six four five zero twenty twelve, and I'm always accepting emails. Funnyjones at gmail dot com. You can write me comments or suggestions, or uh, send me links to weird stories that you come across as well. Um, I appreciate all the correspondence, and I typically respond as well. So um, I'm on Instagram at funnyjones. If you want to keep up with what I got going on in my comedy career going to uh, be performing this weekend in Oakland in the San Francisco area. Uh, we're doing uh, Walnut Creek Thursday night. Oakland, one show Friday. Oakland, two shows Saturday. Oh, an earlier show in, in San Francisco in the city Friday night as well. And then uh, uh, I believe I'm doing the Punchline Sunday night. So that should round out the weekend of shows up there in the Bay I highly recommend the Oakland ones. Those are going to be great shows. Um, but anyways, uh, you'll find all that information on my Instagram, at Funny Jones. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, meaning in 24 hours.